Well, good morning and welcome to another episode of The Grey Nomad Knits. And this is part of my series of 10 kilos in 10 weeks to raise some money to help Andrew Doig over in Germany with his medical expenses. So I really hope that you're following along and you'll see my progress if you watch till the end of the video. I'll post up my week's results. And please, 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 if you're enjoying watching my videos, please make a small donation to Andrew and Andrea. I know they will appreciate it. Their medical expenses must be just massive. Um, and where they're getting treatment, I don't think they're fully covered for that under health insurance. So it's taking a huge financial toll on them. Uh, their fruity knitting channel is their main source of income with their Patreon support they get. So they're really doing it tough at the moment as they can't really produce their shows like they used to. So if you have a few spare dollars lying around, I ask that you make a small donation to them to make their lives a little easier. Now, um, I think I might just quickly talk about my knitting first. It's only been a week, so I haven't made a lot of progress. I did finish the next square. Um on my Marie Wallen Feral Club number no. one blanket. Like I said last week, you cannot buy the pattern for this anymore. And this is the second time I'm making this blanket, uh, mostly from scraps that I had, but I've had to, had to buy a few skeins. So before I start the next square, which is the last one, I'll double check my stash to see what I need to buy. I always, any excuse to go down to the wool shop um, my lo my favourite wool shop here in Perth is Calico and Ivy and yeah if anyone lives in Perth and hasn't heard of them I would urge that you go. The staff there are lovely, they have a beautiful selection of wool and if you're into uh, sewing and quilting they have some lovely quilting fabrics there as well. Okay so here's square number 11 all finished. Let's open it up. I'm so so happy with it. I haven't pressed it out yet. Um, I'll probably just leave it now because as I've only got one square to go, I'll wait and press them the last two or three squares at the same time and then start all the final sewing up process and then it will just be the border. So I'm just having a little break on knitting, uh, starting the next square. Uh, I've been working on my Alice Starmore Damselfly cardigan and also I've just started last night to do a few more rows. Sorry. I can just hear a knocking outside. I'm not sure what it is. Um, yes, yeah, so I um, started to do a few more rows on my uh, double knitting scarf that I was doing. I won't show you that today because it doesn't really look any different to last week. But I have finished this sleeve for my cardigan. Um, that's the top. So there's the there's the cuff down there. It's beautiful colour work, which is done in garter stitch. So if you're doing colour work in garter stitch, just you have to be very careful when you're colouring, uh, carrying your threads, to make sure you're still carrying them on on the wrong side of your work. It's very easy um, to let them slip to the correct side, which you don't want. So. Yeah, so I'm just going to show you, see if you can see this a bit closer. So that's in garter stitch and it gives a beautiful, almost like a jewel, like little jewels studded along there effect. Uh, and it's going to look lovely around, if it fits, <laughs> around my wrists. So it's going to be like this. So this is the sleeve, all finished and it's got these lovely bands um, as you go up the sleeves lovely bands of, of different colours separated by these strips of jewels now when I got to the end this this uh, colour here which is repeated again in this last strip um, I'm going to see if I can find it and show you what I had left okay so um, like I was just saying, I got to the end and this is all I had left of that colour. Now, when you order a kit from Virtual Yarns, Alice and Jade are very, very generous with the amounts of yarn that they give you. And under normal circumstances, I would have had a lot more than this left. But as I explained last week, 
I made a lot of modifications to the size and I sized it up quite a bit from the largest size in the pattern. And in fact, I think last week I said I made the bottom three sizes larger and then brought it back into the top so that the top was the largest size in the pattern. But I remembered afterwards I didn't do that. I made the top size one size larger than the largest size. So even the top was upscaled in sizing as well. So um, I perhaps should have been aware of that and ordered some extra, but I know she's very generous with her quantities. And I made it, so I was very happy. And I don't need any more of this now. All I've got left to do on that jacket now is to cut the steaks, which will be the next job I do on it. But that won't be just for a little while yet because I'm going to knit the final square of my blanket first. So when I do cut that, I'll attempt to film it and um, I think it's the finishing off afterwards too that people might be interested to see so I'll film a bit of that as well. I'm just going to be doing it the way um, Alice instructs you to. On her website she's actually got a really good tutorial if you're thinking of making the damselfly cardigan and it guides you through all the difficult steps. It's not really difficult but steps that you might not have done before, pro processes you may not have done before. She guides you through it all step by step. So I I would highly recommend it. If you haven't knitted any of her designs before, I would highly recommend this one because you'll get your hand held all the way through it. Okay, so um, yeah, once I finish that blanket, I'm going to then continue on with my Anne and Carlos um, uh, Quarantine 2020 blanket. For those of you that don't know, both Anne and Carlos um, Norwegian designers I'm going to say but don't quote me on that <laughs> it's a long way from Australia anyway um, they both got str struck down with coronavirus last year uh, one of them I'm not sure which one might have been Carlos I'm not a hundred percent sure one of them was a lot more ill than the other but thankfully they've both made a great recovery and as they couldn't leave their house for months and months and months they decided to release a square each week of their um, quarantine blanket. So when I finish my um, Fair Isle one I'll then get back into that and I'll show you the progress of that <coughs> as time goes on. And when I finish my Alice Starmore cardigan I'm going to then start going back to my Jennifer Wood from Woodhouse Knits. I'm doing one of hers. I can't remember the design name just now but um, when the time's relevant I'll show you that as well. So lots happening on the knitting front. Um, it's been very, very hot here, considering we're uh, two weeks now into autumn and we have had really hot temperatures. I think it got to 39 on uh, Saturday and I think it was 35 yesterday and the poor footballers were having to run around in that heat. Uh, for those of you who only know Fahrenheit temperatures, I know that 37.7 is 100 degrees. So 35 must be around I don't know, 97, 98 degrees. Um, yeah, and, and they were running around in that heat for three hours yesterday. So, and spectators as well. A lot of that stadium is in the sun. The spectators areas are in full sun. So I kind of felt very sorry for them as well, um, having to sit bake in the sun. I watched it from the comfort of my TV lounge. <laughs> okay, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about my first week of healthy eating. It started off all enthusiastic and then I hit a bit of a stumbling block midweek because we had a bit of a family, not emergency, but and I'm not going to go into it, but just um, we had a bit of a to-do. And when, when I'm really good when everything's going right, but when things go a little bit haywire or askew, awry, <laughs> um, I tend to resort to going and buying food that's quick and easy and no doubt unhealthy and that's what I did on Wednesday and then we also had a takeaway on we had pizza on Saturday night I can blame my husband for that one <laughs> other than that I I ate pretty well um, I tend to stick to the same breakfast each day which is usually porridge with some chopped up fruit and some yogurt and a sprinkle of flaked almonds which give you a bit of crunch which is really nice and uh, dinners we had just 
basically meats with salads because it's been so hot. Um, lunches I was having, you know, you buy those um, flatbread like wraps from Coles or Woolies or somewhere. And I was having those with a bit of ham and salad or something in them. Um, I was out for lunch with my knit group on Friday, I think it was. And I ordered a, a veggie stack, which was just roasted vegetables all stacked on top of each other. And a little piece of, a uh, couple of pieces of halloumi cheese on the top. That was very, very nice. And I thought that was probably quite a good choice. So this week we've got, uh, I'm out for my Tuesday night knit group tomorrow night and we have dinner there, but it's usually, our host makes our dinner and it's usually a very healthy dinner, so I'm not concerned about that. Uh, Thursday night we're going out with my sister and our hubby for Thai, so I can probably make a reasonably good choice there as well. Friday night we're going to a and this was booked and paid for before I committed to this challenge. We're going to a, a one of these many course, I'm not sure how many courses, like degustation type meal at Perth's Anzac Centre. So I'm actually really looking forward to that. Um, while you're doing these things, you still have to live and enjoy yourself. So we'll see how it goes this week. I'm still hoping to have a good loss, but it may not be as much as this week. And then, of course, we'll have Easter after that. So I've got a few challenges ahead, but what I'm going to do this week is start to introduce some exercise, uh, especially now that the weather has finally got under 30 degrees. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you like my channel, you feel free to hit the subscribe button at the end. Um, and, yeah, if you have any questions, just throw them in the comments below. And I want to say a great big thank you to my friend Jane, who has uh, made a lovely donation to Andrew and Andrea. Also my friend Grace, who has pledged some money, and she's also going to lose some weight. And she's going to double that money if she gets to her goal. So good on you, Grace. And um, to all my friends who are all being very supportive, a great big thank you. And I just want to also send a great big kiss and a hug to Andrew and Andrea over in Germany. I just want to let you know that all your friends around the world, in the knitting world at least, and, and outside the knitting world, we're all thinking of you and sending you warm, positive vibes. So I shall be back next week. Oh, I have got some part-time work coming up soon, but not till the end of April. Um, when I'm working on a Monday, I won't be doing this, so uh, but I'll let you know beforehand. But anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see you this time next week. Bye for now. Oh, <laughs> back again. As you know, we haven't been doing any traveling lately, um, and I do like to include some of our travel photos on my videos. In 2019, we did a trip to Queensland. Um, so those of you who don't know Australia terribly well, Perth's here. Queensland's here and there's a four and a half hour plane flight in between or about a week's driving. <laughs> Our daughter lives in Queensland so we went to visit her for a few days and then we popped down to Sydney for a few days and then we had two weeks in Tasmania um, staying at my brother's house in Hobart and we had a wonderful time. So I will just post a few photos from that holiday at the end. And in the meantime, have a good week everyone. Stay safe especially if you're in New South Wales at the moment with all the floods thinking of you over there stay safe stay healthy and look forward to seeing you next week bye